Hi, in order to run PHP scripts on your local machine, you need to have uh, a server, you need to have the MySQL if you're going to query a database, and you need to have PHP installed. Now you can do each of these separately uh, as full installs. They all have window install packages. Uh, the thing about that is it is a very long, complicated, drawn out process, and there is an outfit that has made this very, very easy, and they're open source, and it is called XAMPP, and it might be two P's in that, I'm not sure, but I'm going to go ahead and in my search engine, I'm going to type XAMPP, and yeah, there are two P's in there. So the first thing that comes up is Apache Friends XAMPP, and that's at apachefriends.org. So when you click into that, you'll get the front page of XAMPP, and it will give you a brief description of what XAMPP is and how it works and what flavors it comes in. Uh, so let's go ahead and pick the one for Windows if you're on a Windows machine. If you're on a Mac machine this might be different. Now, one thing I do want to caution you about here there's a uh, free download download manager you want to be sure when you look at something like that and you see this little arrow this little blue arrow click over that you'll see that's add choices this is not a part of the download and it's a very easy way to pick up uh, crap like toolbars you don't want things like that but anyway back to what we're doing XAMPP for Windows uh, it's telling you about the new release and it contains Apache 2.4.2 MySQL 5.5.2.5a PHP 4.4.4 PHP Admin 3.5.2 uh, FileZilla FTP server if you want to uh, run file servers Tomcat, Strawberry, etc. I don't know about those there. What we're going to be dealing with mainly in most of my tutorials is going to just be this MySQL and PHP and the PHP admin, which is a part of PHP. So mainly MySQL and PHP. The Apache server is necessary because you uh, have to have your machine running as a server. Now it tells you there's some jump off points, uh, there's XAMPP, and then there's some add-ons, and there's a USB light. You, if you want to install the USB light, this will put XAMPP on a USB drive, and you can just move this from computer to computer, and it's a lighter version of XAMPP. Uh, I haven't tried any of them because I typically just program directly on my remote server, but for a lot of the lessons that we're going to do here, you may not already have a remote server set up, so we're going to go ahead and do the XAMPP. So let's go for the uh, installation with installer, installation without installer. Uh, I want to start XAMPP without setup. I don't even know what that is. But uh, we'll go with installation with the installer. And that's going to tell you, it's going to give you the method of install. It's going to show you a destination folder. And then it's going to show you uh, what I think is a little bit older version of the control panel. I'll show you the control panel. I have already installed this. Unfortunately, uh, my capture program crashed. And I went a little longer on that video than I needed to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the install. Once again, do not click this thing up at the top that says download. It's, it, it's nothing but trouble. So uh, there are three different ways to do this. There's the installer, and it says that's probably the most comfortable way to install XAMPP. And for you purists, there's XAMPP as ordinary zip files. And if you're complicated enough to do this, you're probably not watching this video anyway. So, uh, and then there's, for purists with low bandwidth, there's a 7-zip archive. We'll get into 7-zip in another video, but you don't uh, probably don't need that. Once again, if you're watching this video about XAMPP, I would say let's go with the installer, the most comfortable way. So we go down here to the installer and we click on this and then it's going to take you to SourceForge which will wait five seconds hoping you'll click an add in the meantime or something. And now it's going to say save file. So when I go to save this file, I already have this file so I'm just going to skip that process here. But you would go ahead and save the file and then once the file is saved in your download manager you will click it or you will remember the location where you saved it and open that file in your Windows Explorer and then click that file in there and then it will run the install it will ask you if you do want to install or if you don't want to 
if you want that program to make changes to your computer, you'll say yes. So go ahead and make those changes to your computer and install that. We'll catch you back here when you're done. And then the next thing that's going to happen uh, is you're going to be given some choices and it's going to ask you three things on the bottom whether you want to start uh, Apache as a service, PHP as a service, and MySQL I think as a service. Now because I've already installed this, I've already passed those steps. Do not check those boxes. You do not want to install them as a service because uh, for a lot of reasons, I'll just get into the most brief one. If you install it as a service, it's going to go ahead and start those programs and run them every time your computer is on. Not only is that going to take up some of your computer's memory, it's also going to make your computer vulnerable to uh, outside attacks, which you don't want to do. Uh, I'm not saying that's going to happen, but every time your computer is on, you have a, a web server and a MySQL server and all of that running. So you kind of want to skip that in my estimation. So now here's what we're going to do. We're going to assume that you have installed it and that you have skipped the services. And if, if you haven't skipped the services, you, you can just look into how you can turn those off. That's outside of the scope of this video. But once you have completed that, you should be able to go to localhost and at the moment I do not have my XAMPP turned on. I'll turn it on in a minute, but I'm going to show you this for the sake of what you should have if XAMPP is turned off. You're going to get a nothing. Okay, great. Awesome. So now I'm going to open this up. I'm going to uh, click on the XAMPP control panel. And if, you, if it's not showing up here, just click All Programs and go down to... Uh, okay, yes, it's uh, under All Programs, under Apache Friends. Click that and you'll see XAMPP. XAMPP Control Panel is what you want. Okay, and you'll be presented with something like this. You have Apache, MySQL, FileZilla, Tomcat. Uh, PHP apparently turns itself on natively. So we're going to go ahead and start Apache, and it will tell you uh, what ports you're on on Apache. You might get a warning saying, do you want to open this up to the network or not open it to the network? Uh, if you get that warning, open it uh, to your local network. Don't open it to outside networks. And let me see if I get that with FileZilla because I didn't open that last time. There it is. This is the type of warning you're going to get. and It's going to say Windows Firewall has blocked some of the features. And depending on what, uh, what other uh, programs you have for protection on your computer, you might get some other warning. But allow fi FileZilla uh, server to communicate on these networks. Uh, private networks such as my home or work network, uh, public network. Uh, I'm going to cancel because I have a different version of FileZilla and I'm, I'm not really going to use the FileZilla server here. So anyway, Apache and MySQL and if you want to, FileZilla. And you've got these started. So let me close this back out and I'm going to refresh this local host and you should now have an XAMPP welcome page here. Sure do. XAMPP. Welcome to XAMPP for Windows. Yours may look different. Mine did uh, the first time I opened it, but now it's changed. So now you want to also go to your PHP information and it's going to give you information about your PHP system which tells you that your PHP is running and that's all good. Let's see what it said. Something about FTP. I want to see what FTP support is enabled for FTP if you had that going. And uh, now in tools I want to go to F, uh, PHP my admin because I want to be sure I can create databases. So I'm going to just click that real quick. PHP my admin and see what comes up and it's waiting and it's got that right there so let's see databases uh, let's see databases create uh, okay my first I'm gonna call this my first and I'm gonna go ahead and create that processing request database my first has been created so let's go to database my first and uh, actually get a quick uh, uh, table. I'm just going to call this table. 
number of columns two go and it's creating a table so yeah this is working the way it's supposed to you would just make an ID field here int auto increment blah 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 and you would make another field here I'm not going to do any of that I'm just going to skip out of that cancel and I'm going to go back here to my localhost home page let's let's just go to localhost and I created a quick PHP test script which I call test PHP and it just is a script that echoes uh, hello world and then good night and I'll show you right here there's a PHP open tag echo hello world good night and then there's that and then uh, I'm gonna write done here and because we are pretty much done and you have installed your XAMPP installation you have a server running on your machine now when I, I refresh this it should also say done which it does so I think we've covered everything with the XAMPP installation and hopefully that works out well for you if it doesn't then uh, uh, leave a note in the description and hopefully someone can help you or I can help you uh, please watch my videos and check the description area for links and we're going to get into a whole lot of programming now using this XAMPP. Thank you very much, and if this helped you, please give me a thumbs up, rate, subscribe, comment. Thanks. Have a great day.